Welcome to the Hampton Beach Village District Monthly Meeting. It's October 10th, 2018. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Allegiance <coughs> to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to uh, announce we've had three residents of the village district pass away, so I'd like to take a moment of silence for James McGader, Richard King, and Teresa Valera. Thank you. Chief Ayotte, would you like to come up to the, give us a little overview of the summer and what we can do to help and what what's going on? Well, certainly. Thank you very much. Thank I appreciate you. all of your time, and thank you for allowing me to come and speak with you tonight. Uh, I have a few items that I, I would like to point out that have happened um, to us recently. As you have probably noticed or you may have seen coming in the door, Engine 4 has returned. It has been gone since April as a result of the floods in January. There was electrical issues and some other mechanical issues that had gone wrong with the engine for its response in the floods. It went out to Wyoiga, Wisconsin, and was returned on Friday last week and placed into service. Um, I was uh, told by Mr. Rice that we have an issue downstairs that needs to be dealt with on the handicap powered entrance, so we'll have that looked at immediately. Um, we've had an issue here with um, electrical, possibly an electrical problem that might be due to a transfer switch. When the generator kicks on, it's been blowing some circuit boards for two of our boilers and, um, and one hot water heater. So we've addressed those. We're going to be working on that, and we'll see if this is part of the same problem. I'd like to let you know, and if it, it may be in the paper today, as a matter of fact, or yesterday, uh, we have two new paramedics at Hampton Fire Rescue, Firefighter Kate Mean and Firefighter Dean Sonis, both accomplished that goal. They went through a 16-month program over at um, the New England EMS Institute, and upon completion, they went through the certification and were awarded their paramedic certificate, so now they're working as paramedics for the fire department. Uh, our call volume is up, and over the summer we did see an increase. In July alone, we were up 28 calls over last year, which is a pretty significant amount. Certainly. Um, just to let everybody know, because this is a very frequent question, Hampton Fire Rescue did respond to Lawrence when they had the gas emergency. Uh, that particular night, which was uh, September 13th, Thursday night, we were called. We responded with an engine and a ladder and myself. So there were three pieces that were in Lawrence. We were there until about 4 a.m. Uh, the next day, they requested an ambulance, so we sent an ambulance for their response, and they were doing calls within the community. So for that three-day period, we had spent a significant amount of time with them. Um, I'd love, I really am happy to uh, announce that we received an AFG grant to the tune of $83,410. We're going to be replacing mobile radios, which are the radios that are inside of our fire engines, as well as base radios. We're going to do one here at this station and one uptown at headquarters. We're also going to be purchasing 40 pagers, one for each firefighter, so that we can do uh, have better recall. Um, and last but not least, one of the things that I had talked to the Board of Selectmen about in August was the growth of the community. So I'd like to make sure that I impress upon you the, what we're seeing and what our determinant is for this. I know that Chief Sawyer has spoken to the Board uh, recently, and he mentioned the growth and the numbers that we were using, and we talked about this before, um, from the Assessor's Office, from Boar's Head to the bridge. There's been about $260 million worth of construction, which is an awful lot of construction, but that's only the beach. The entire community continues to grow, and as such, we watch that. We really do, and we pay attention. If we're looking at a value, which a lot of people do when they look at real estate, they look at how much things cost and whether the values go up or down. If we look at it from a value standpoint, Hampton Fire Rescue is currently protecting $3.5 billion worth of property. That's an awful lot of property. We also, if we look at it from that perspective, have maintained our budget within a very small increase each year. Uh, there's been very little growth in that way. We have been looking at what the, what the town's been doing, and we see that there's growth, not only here, not only at the beach, but also uptown. And if you drive up on um, Exeter Road, you can see there's two big buildings going up there. One of them's 91,000 square feet, and the other one's very similar. So we've got Spring Hill Estates and Cornerstone. When we, as firefighters, look at this, the value will go up and down with the market, so we don't really pay attention to numbers because it's not as important to us. What bothers us, or what we're concerned about, I should say, is volume, space. And since 2012, when I was hired here as your deputy fire chief, 
we have grown in the community by 1.4 million square feet. That's an awful lot of real estate to protect. And if you look around at some of these buildings, they used to be one story, you know, studio type uh, hotels, they're now <coughs> five stories tall. In order to do the work that we might have to do, whether it's carrying a patient down from the fifth floor, if the elevator's out, or carrying a hose line up to the third floor, fourth floor, whatever it might be, that's an awful lot of work, and it requires personnel to do that. So I'd just like you to keep in mind that this growth has been explosive in this town and continues to be. Those two buildings that I talked about are huge buildings, but they're not alone. We've seen a lot of that down here. So it's just something that I would ask you to keep on your agenda when you're looking at it, and I'm certainly happy to answer any questions. Does anybody from the audience have any questions? The, the two paramedics, now they are already fire personnel, right? Correct, yeah, I believe one has nine years with us, and uh, one has more than that, close to 11, so, I believe. So what is, the, what is are you having the similar problem that I know the chief is having? Get, getting staff for hiring. hiring. You know, I'm very grateful to the fact that last year we hired Adam Mills as our last hire. Um, he's he's been with us now about 17, 18 months. Uh, fantastic hire too. We stole him from Northampton. Don't tell anybody. Um, he was he was a fantastic kid to get. He was a paramedic as well. Since then, we've been at full complement. We've had all of our shifts have been filled, and I haven't had to do any hiring since then. Um, when we do in in that time frame, a year and a half ago. It was very difficult. When I first arrived here, I needed to hire three people because there were three vacancies. We put it out to the papers, we put it out to the, to the mass media. I had 64 applications for those three positions. One position now, five applications. I've talked to some of my counterparts. London Dairy now has a SAFER grant. They have five positions, four from the SAFER grant and one retirement. They have five open positions. They have 12 applications. After they get through the culling of the resumes and background, they'll probably have two real candidates. So it's a very difficult thing, just like Chief's told you in the past. It, uh, hiring is very difficult. Hi firing, finding um, quality employees is exceptionally difficult. Do we have a lot of, and we're going to have much turnover coming up? Is there an, uh, we, uh... Well, I think that in the next 18 to 36 months, we have the potential for retirees. There are, there are some of our um, officer corps that certainly getting to that point where they're looking at that at least. Uh, whether or not they'll, they'll take their leave at that time or if they'll stay on, that's up to them. Um, I have two firefighters that potentially may be in that rank, but probably not. So I think that realistically we're probably not going to see that, at least in 2019. Um, so I can't tell you that looking down the road it wouldn't happen, but for now, for the foreseeable future, I don't think that that's going to be an issue. Okay. One thing that I would like to point out, and I did it to, to uh, the Board of Selectmen, is that a couple of times this summer you may have noticed that there was an ambulance and it was staffed down here. And I did that because of the heat waves that we were having. Anytime there was a heat warning from the National Weather Service where we had temperatures of about 100 degrees or higher, especially when it came to um, just, you know, ambient heat and relative temperature, um, we brought in an extra person, so we staffed to 10. And I've told you that before. If I have 10 personnel, then I will have five at each station, three on the engines, and two on the ambulances. The two on the ambulance uptown will staff the ladder truck. The two on the ambulance down here will still be firefighters, and they'll go to the calls. They'll take the ambulance to the call. But just so you know, why that happened this year was because of that. Now, we staffed at 9, and we saw the board because of that. We wanted to go and make sure that we'd be okay with the budget. From June 15th on, and we've continued to do so. We've remained at 9 personnel every day, all day. With this, we added to, to the 10th, and we were able to bring that ambulance down here. So if you did see that, that's why. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just have one question. Yes, sir. How do you determine <coughs> the appropriate number of firefighters to have? Is it by the assessed value of the town, the population of the town, or other factors? Well, th there's an awful lot of there's an awful lot of answers to that question. Okay, um, if we look at the NFPA standards, there's certainly an answer to it from the, that standpoint, where they've actually done and conducted scientific studies to determine how many personnel it requires to do the job efficiently. In doing so, they, f they found that a single one-story um, home, a residential structure, requires 17 on the first alarm. So that first alarm responding to it requires 17 firefighters. That's one person to take command, the first engine to not only go and start putting water on the fire but start looking for victims, the second engine to bring water to that engine because we have a finite amount in the tank that's held in the, in the truck, somebody else to do ventilation and then search and rescue with the ladder truck. That's 17. We don't get there until we're at a second, uh, first, first alarm. So we'll go out on a transmitted box, we call it, and then the next one is a first alarm. We'll transmit the first alarm. That's when we see our first 17 people. So we, we use those calculations generally. Well, at, in the hotel, uh, we have um, 
we had a few calls this year, and I got to tell you, Hampton has the best the best people around. They they were fantastic. Totally agree. Thank and, you very uh, much, sir. I will pass I that on to them. Appreciate all they do. Thank you. Thank you all, sir. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Yes, sir. Thanks, Jim. Good evening, and I will echo the chief's comments about the growth we're experiencing in this town. It is one of those things I wouldn't want to be a naysayer on, on progress. I grew up here, and it's good to see some of the advancements we've made. But we also have to be cognizant of our infrastructure needs, like wastewater treatment plants, sewer lines, fire, and police. So I just echo what the chief said. Just be cognizant of that as we progress and these different projects get proposed factor those into the decision making. Those have to be addressed uh, or we're going to continue to see problems like we've experienced over the last couple of years with our growth. The summer of 2018, um, we have some pluses and minuses. We're up in, uh, in some areas. Uh, a lot of it is self-generated activity though by the officers, so our calls for service were up 6% compared to the same quarter last year. The one that's uh, concerning me the most is the DWIs. I think I've spoken about the alcohol issues down here, particularly down here at the beach, but it's a town-wide issue, is the over-serving of alcohol that we're experiencing at our venues. Uh, it continues to be a problem. Our DWI arrests were up 18% in that quarter. For the year, um, we're, pre um, we're pretty easily going to beat last year's total numbers because we're almost on it now, and we have a quarter to go. Um, it's one of these things. People come here to have a good time, and we want them to have a good time, but we also want them to be responsible, and particularly the people that are serving the alcohol need to pay attention to their clients, the people that they're pouring the drinks for. It, it's, it's a slippery slope, and we're up 18%. Uh, fortunately, we did not see a, a corresponding increase in fatalities or serious bodily injury accidents. Um, but the DWI arrest, it, it's got in the, just sometimes it, the closing time, it's the walking wounded out there, um, and, it, and it's tough to manage. So in light of that, we've been trying to do a better job as we come across people if they're under arrest or protective custody for intoxication, identifying where they had been drinking. We take that information and put it in the report, and hopefully liquor enforcement gets a chance to address it, because those are administrative functions. Those are not issues the police department can actually address administratively. That's liquor enforcement and the Hampshire Liquor Commission. One of the other things, just to highlight it and maybe to make our, uh, our establishments more aware of the situation we're dealing with out there, is we are going to be generating a letter. Each and every time the Hampton Police Department comes into contact with somebody that's intoxicated and we can identify where they had their last drink, a letter will be generated with my signature on it, identifying this person if they're in what the arrest number, if there are any charges, and highlighting the liability and risks that these establishments are taking upon themselves for allowing these people to leave their establishments to that degree. So uh, it's just we have to do something. Uh, we keep putting people out there, and the more people we put out, the more arrests we make for that area. Well, that's what I was going to ask, is it seems to be a lot more of uh, police presence, which is great. Uh, so do you think that's the reason for the increase? Or? I'd say it's the increase this year. We had a, we had a good recruiting year uh, in 18. We brought in 12 new officers, and I did not lose as many. So maybe I'm hopeful that we've turned, you know, that attrition issue that we've been facing where we're, we're hiring good people, but we're losing more because the other agencies, obviously, they see the product we produce for police officers, and, you know, half a sale in PD is started in Hampton. Manchester's got over 20. Nashville's got over 20. Uh, Derry's got a bunch. State police has a lot of the troopers that come down here started here, so... We do a great job training, but the other problem is is they're part-time and they're looking to go full-time, um, so we don't always uh, get the benefit of our fine training. So uh, dealing with that, the officers we're putting out there are of a great quality, so they're, they're very good at what they're doing. They're eager to learn their job, and they're out there, and, and they're identifying the problem areas that we're experiencing. Even though our total arrests are down 27%, those critical areas like DWI are up. Uh, so I, I give a lot of the credit to them. Uh, but a lot of it is we have to pay better attention. Our, our folks down here running the establishments have to do a better job or we're going to have a tragedy occur. I definitely see people, because of the police presence, are acting a lot, uh, just acting less crazy. Well, those are the type of the things we're so talking about. It definitely about. makes a difference having those that. disorderly conduct arrests, those disorderly conduct issues that we experience, quality of life issues, are down. 
uh, considerably, but we still have the alcohol issue that, that becomes dangerous anytime anybody gets behind the wheel or even walking down the street, walking out in front of a car. And we've had a number of those things uh, occur that we, we have to try to do something with that. Other than that, the uh, biggest one I'm very happy is we increased our parking enforcement operations this year, and we saw a great result. We we're up 103 percent in the number of parking tickets we wrote, and our parking ticket income is up 86 percent. Not that I want to be in the business of making money. That's not the purpose of a police department. It's the enforcement of laws. But if that also comes with that corresponding uh, issue, it increases. That means we're out there doing our job and doing a better job, particularly uh, up in the North Shore areas where our, our, a lot of our parking areas really increase over the course of a summer. Um, we are working uh, towards combining our enforcement operations. If you weren't aware, the Hampton Police Department took over the operations of the town's pay lots down here at the beach. Um, and that appears to be going to be the continuing uh, program. So we're going to try to combine those entities to give us a better idea of the parking issues and what the thing, what things can we do to improve parking here at Hampton, uh, at least on the town's end. And I know we're working with the precinct and also with the private vendors to try to use that app that uh, the Chamber of Commerce came up with to try to get people to where the, where the parking is. So I think that's part of the problem. We have so many cars whooping and they don't know that go down this side street and there's a parking lot right there. And trying to get people to those vacant spots is uh, hopefully going to help some of the traffic issues. Uh, with that, uh, recruiting, we just ran a test on uh, Sunday, and I'll share with you the results of the testing. Uh, it's been fairly consistent. We had 41 scheduled to take the test, 7 no-showed, 4 withdrew, uh, 13 went to the oral boards, plus we had 3 folks from a prior test. Um, so that's <coughs> honestly right in the ballpark of where we were the last test. Uh, so we're not seeing an increase yet in the volume of people uh, applying, but that's also a national trend. Uh, we're, we're still dealing with that across the country. Um, but at least the quality of the people that the uh, class we had in 18 was probably one of the best classes I've ever seen in my career with this PD. They're just outstanding people. And I anticipate we'll probably be hiring a few of them full time. I do anticipate a number of retirements. We have a lot of people that... Uh, They've been with the department a long time, and they're coming on, and they've given strong indication that they'll be probably retiring in 2019. So hopefully we get to take some of that talent that we've developed and keep it for ourselves. So and with that, I'll answer any questions you might have. I have a question. Well, it's a comment, actually. Yeah. Um, remember when we had an issue with people putting up fake uh, parking yeah. signs? <laughs> the no parking signs, story. Yeah. Um, yeah. Could you address that and tell people yeah, that I, I know not to do it because they may be ticketed? People get very frustrated with the parking situation, and I wish I could tell you it's going to get better quicker, that, that, but I'd be lying to you. There's a lot of growth issues we're dealing with, and out of frustration, people will put up no parking signs in front of their houses or up on phone poles where they don't legitimately belong. And what occurred is somebody did that. One of my parking enforcement people that's new this year went down and wrote some parking tickets to people, and people were very upset. Well, there was a sign there. Right. and. Unfortunately, there was no ordinance, so we did we did void the the, uh, the parking ticket. But we also had a conversation with the person that put the sign up. You you are not authorized, not allowed to put up your own signs to control traffic on a street. The street belongs to the town. The town governs what rules are are, uh, are put onto those streets. I know not everybody's happy with that. They want everybody wants a speed bump. Everybody wants this. It just. <laughs> We just don't have that. I don't have, you know, speed bumps are not cheap, and it puts a burden on public works because they're not easy to put down, and we have to get them up before the snow hits. So we, I don't go a week where I don't get somebody demanding I put a speed bump on their road. It just, I understand, but I don't have that many of those items to put out everywhere, and it's truly not the solution. So just don't take the law into your own hands and putting up signs and things out in the street or like in Boston where now you start seeing people putting lawn chairs out in front to save the parking spots. If I see it, I'm going to drive by and I'm going to take your long chair and you come down with PD and pick it up with your, with your summons. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to stop doing that. Uh, thank you. My sense is, as the emergency management director. Oh, you're going to throw that at me, huh? Uh, you <laughs> have each year acquired a new something that was new, i.e., the degree of the flooding, the Legionnaire's di uh, disease issue. And I'm, I'm just wondering. Is, are we reaching a tipping point? Uh, I think we can look at it that way. I think the, the, the issue with emergency management as it functions, okay, is different from community to community. 
if you look at what the statute says, every town has to have an emergency management director. And it's not like the czar of everything when it goes bad. Basically, it's the person that coordinates when things get beyond the local entity's ability to handle, whatever it may be. Somebody has to be speaking for the town to coordinate the relief efforts coming from the state and the federal entities. And that's truly what an emergency management director does. But when you look around in different communities, it's kind of a, a catch-all for a lot of communities. Okay, as to we got this problem and it's really not a fire problem, it's not really a police problem or DPW problem, we'll give it to emergency management. But when you look at those communities, they have an actual emergency management department. They have people that do that all the time and that's what they do. Um, so when you look at something like the Legionnaires outbreak, um, you have something like that happen in Manchester, Nashua, they have a health department. They don't have one health officer that wears three other, three other hats. They have a number of health officers to manage something like that. A town of Hampton, let's face it, we're, we're a little unique. We're, we're a nice little town of 15,000 for most of the year, and then we become the biggest city in the state for a couple of months. And trying to change gears and staff that, you know, dealing with the staffing issues that the fire and police were having, you know, I don't staff, you know, in February like I do in July, so how do you accomplish that? Well, emergency management's the same thing. Where do we put something like that when it happened? Because it was very unique. It was the largest outbreak of that type in the state of New Hampshire in over 20 years. So where did we put it? Because we have a health officer, but he's the building inspector who's probably the busiest man in town with the growth we're experiencing. And, and probably when you look, not the right person to be the health officer. No, I, I, think, he, I think Kevin's an outstanding health officer. The, the more the issue is when you deal with cir circumstances like this that require a multi-jurisdictional and disciplinary approach, you have to have people that are used to doing that. Well, who's used to doing that in this town? It's the police department and the fire department. So they assigned that issue, even though it's not truly emergency management, to us to manage that along with our state and federal partners. It, it, it was the natural place for this community to do that. Um, you know, but I think a lot of times people misunderstand what, at least statutorily, what emergency management is. But as a town, I think we have, a, we have the ability and the flexibility to utilize it to fill those gaps just because of who we are, the way we change gears so much with the population growths and then decreasing. So maybe someday we're big enough we have our own emergency management group uh, that that's all they do. I don't think, I don't know if we're there yet. I, I don't think there's any objection that if we put a team together um, of people that can help in those circumstances uh, because really what it is, it's a lot of paperwork. Uh, we're still working on trying to get some money out of FEMA for the storms and the meetings that people have to put themselves through in the paperwork, I'm not even sure if it's worth the money we'll get back. You know, if we had some people that really just focused on that, so a fire chief can be a fire chief and a police chief can be a police chief, it might help. Mm -hmm. So, but those are further, I know we're going to have further discussions on that down the road. I, I wasn't critical of the building inspector. I just feel the building inspector with the building boom has got more than enough to do and to ask him to concurrently be the health officer and suddenly you're dealing with an issue. Well, I believe you'll yeah. probably see coming up, uh, there's a lot of talk about putting together a warrant article to create a health officer slash code enforcement officer looking at what occurred and, you know, the less, and these things, these bad things happen, you got to try to walk away with the lessons learned. And I think a lot of people are looking at that, that maybe we could get some of that off of Kevin's shoulders again because a lot, a lot's going on, and I think the chief made a very good point. We've all been operating within our budgets pretty well with minimal increases year to year, even though the growth is just, incra it's crazy when you look at it. Um, but at some point, something's got to give, and we've got to add something to keep up with that. So I think that would be a good, that would be a small ticket item. It's not going to be big money. It could be a part-time position, you know, a 28-hour-a-week position uh, that gets very busy ramping up for the summer. But I think those are the types of things we need to start exploring in this town to take away some of the multiple hats that some of us wear because we are the, every department head is wearing multiple, multiple hats and trying to work the magic on everything they can. And, and at some point, something is going to slip through. Yeah. So. Okay. Anybody have any questions? No. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great night. Yeah. Thanks for coming. John. Regina. Hey guys, I just wanted to come in and say hi to everyone. I know I missed a couple meetings this summer, but 
Also, I wanted to give an update because I just came from the USS Virginia placking ceremony at the Portsmouth Navy shipyard, which was just as good as it was last time I went for the USS Hampton. And Mike Edgar represented the town of Hampton and spoke because he is chairman of the U he was chairman of the USS Hampton committee, which still exists, and that we're hoping to turn into the USS Virginia because, in case you don't know, the town of Hampton was asked to host the USS Virginia because they heard of what a great job we did hosting the USS Hampton. So I'm hoping to be more of a part of that this time. So I just came from that. That's why I was a little late. What, is, what, is, what are you at? What does the town of Hampton do to host? Well, like last year, I know they came and they helped build the uh, new playground up at Five Corners. Mm -hmm. And we're hoping we had the Warren article pass for Parks and Rex to redo some work down at Kid, Kids Kingdom, which is in dire need of a uh, makeover. So we're hoping to maybe have them do that. Obviously participate in the Christmas parade as they did last time. And I don't think it's really been worked out yet. We just, I just met some of the people today, so, but I'm sure we'll figure it out. Mike, Hed is, Mike Edgar is planning on sharing it again, so. I'm hoping, too, to maybe get some new people involved while we still have those other guys there that are still doing it. But, you know, maybe eventually one day they might not want to do it anymore, so it would be nice to get some new people in there while we have them to uh, help us out and get oriented into doing such a good job. So, does anyone have any questions for me? I do. Okay. The meeting for with the state is yes. tomorrow? Yes. No, no. It's November 1st. That is what it's scheduled as right now. And Can you ask if one of us could be there? We don't have to talk, but just be part of it. I will ask that question, yes. Because it is the town and the beach. And I the agree state, with you. So, I think it should, one of us should be there. And as far as I know, we are only meeting with, because we're saying the state, but we're actually only meeting with state parks, which is, I forget what the, it's like DNRC. I can't think of what the new acronym is, but it's what was. What DREAD used to be. What DREAD <laughs> used to be. So as far as I know, we are just meeting with officials, employees from the state, yeah. and the Board of Selectmen, and then I believe there's going to be someone from the Attorney General's office, and then obviously, uh, town council will be there for the Board of Selectmen. I know having it non-public is not the most ideal situation, but it's better than nothing. So that's why I wanted to reach out tonight um, to you guys, let everyone know down here. If they have anything they specifically want to know, an email to me is probably the best thing, and I'll bring it with my other stack of papers I'm going to be bringing to that meeting and make sure it gets addressed. Are they going to have, like what they usually have, a fall... Yeah, you know what, that was, we didn't hear anything about yeah. that. Isn't that usually in October? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I haven't heard anything on that. Not and I you asked. guys haven't either? No, I've asked. Them. They didn't because I thought originally they were going to. Yeah. This, but. No. Just for the audience, can you explain the purpose of the meeting with the state? Well, I know prior to filing a suit, a lot of people weren't happy because they wanted us to sit down and talk. Well, as you know, the board unit, I don't know, was it a 4-1 vote to file the complaint against the state? And the reason why I think it was 4-1 <coughs> is because we've been trying to sit down and talk for all these years, and nothing has come about it with no complaints filed, no lawsuits filed. You know, and I think probably people picture it in their mind that, you know, literally we're going to be on one side of a courtroom, and, you know, Sununu and all those guys are going to be on the other side. Well, I don't ever want to see that happen, and I don't think hopefully anyone on either side does. So with the rec recommendation of the judge, pretty much, and I'm going to be pretty straightforward because we've talked about this at Board of Selectmen meetings, and it's all public information, but the judge pretty much told us that we should do a couple things and try to get some information using the RSA 91A from the different state departments, DOT, DRED whatever it's called now, and um, DRA, the Department of Revenue Administration. So we are waiting. They, need, they said they need a little more time for those requests. You know, Mark has done that, as was, request, as was uh, recommended by the judge. And we'll have, we'll decide within a year we can file that same exact complaint. So I imagine now that we decided we're going to have this non-public meeting, which came up after we motion to, uh, 
I don't want to use the wrong legal word here. Withdrawal is not the word I'm searching for, but dismissed. we without prejudice. Yeah, you withdrawal, dismissed it without prejudice. Dis okay, dismissed it without prejudice. So now they want to meet with us, which is great, I think. You know, obviously I would like to have it at a public board of selectmen meeting, but that's not going to happen. So we got to work with what we got. So I'm not sure. I don't I haven't seen an agenda for the meeting, but I mean, what else is it going to be about? You know, like we have what we've asked for in the 91A. So the first question I'm going to ask is, we're meeting with State Park, so I'm going to take out, you know, the request that we sent out to them and just ask them, what is the status on this? When do you think we'll be getting this information? And then I guess we have counsel there, so we'll be able to pretty much ask any questions back and forth that we want and try to get some information. So if anyone has anything specific, business owners, property owners, anything they see down here, things that happened this summer that didn't necessarily happen before in the past, good or bad, I think maybe you guys should, if you have anything you want me to voice for you, let me know. In writing is preferred by email, and I will make sure that those, I'll attempt to get them answered for you. DNCR. DNCR. Just look that up. <laughs> it's been reported in the paper that the state's response to the 93A request, a 91A request will be, we do not have to produce documents we do not otherwise collect. Uh, yours, and that, I understand the inference was you'll get the data for Rockingham County, not for Hampton. And so you have a... Oh, are you talking about for the request that we sent to the Department yeah. of Revenue Administration? Yeah. Yes, and I meant to bring those letters with me, but I forgot... Yeah, and I actually, Max had called me and asked me about this. DRA stated what we had asked for was we wanted to know what came specifically from Hampton and Hampton Beach as it is divided on their DRA. They distinguished between Hampton, Hampton Beach, rooms and meals. They said they could not, yeah, they would not provide that because it goes against, privacy you know, or something. yeah, privacy. Well, it was also reported that they do not compile data that way and they are under 91A they are not required to create a new way to compile information but only to produce what already exists so if they're saying that that's not going to be amended by 91A then I would ask them well how do you recommend that we amend it that's what we're meeting them for right we're going to try to settle what we have questions about well if you're not going to do it this way because you're saying you're not required to I think that would be a bill for our reps in the state house to have to put through. Yeah, so it would be interesting to see if the state yeah. backs off that interpretation. Well, I don't, yeah, but there's not going to be able to get any bills until be between now and November 1st. <laughs> no, I mean, at your but what are, the, what are they going to recommend? Like, you just asked me that question. So when I ask them that question, what are they going to say? Like, that's what I want to know. Like, you know, we're sitting here trying to get along with each other, you know, everything's great. But it's not. Like, you just heard from both our chiefs what they have to go through. And then on top of that, you know, other elected officials in this town on certain boards just think that, oh, well, you know what, we can just keep doing what we're doing because it's what we've been doing for the past 30 years. So now Hampton's got the state who finally wants to sit down and talk to them. So I'm going to take full advantage of that. And questions like that that I don't think of, I'd like you to get them to me in writing so that I can ask them then. Because I think that, I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. But it's, you know, also, I don't know if anyone's read the union leader lately, but the state of New Hampshire is looking for the federal government to uh, reimburse them on certain expenses. Yeah. So <laughs> where did they get that idea from? <laughs> You know, because it's common sense. That's why, like, when you put some things aside and just focus on what needs to be done, which I think is what we need to do right now, focus on what needs to be done and forget about how things were done in the past. And, you know, like this USS Hampton Committee for right now that's going to transform into the USS Virginia Committee because Virginia told their guys we want Hampton to host us. You know, let's always stay awesome. We're always awesome. But in order to, we got to give, like, our chiefs, they need our complete support. Public Works needs our complete support. I haven't seen any of the budget right now, and I'm not really that upset about that. But um, 
I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I know that the town manager works diligently and the assistant town manager with the department heads to make it as precise as it needs to be. And I think we just need to open everyone's eyes up that we all need to sort of pay attention with what we got going on. And you know, state reps, state senators, people that are running, if they have questions, ask. I mean, ask me. If I don't have the answer, I'll go find it. Because I mean, I don't have a lot of these answers. It's my third year <coughs> doing this. The only thing I have is living here my whole life. So. Two things have occurred that might be very positive. One was you dismissed the suit without prejudice, which sets a better tone for talk. And two, the cooperation at all levels of government about the pipe was yeah. really Yeah, impressive. so don't tell me that it can't happen fast, because look at that. And it was like, they didn't, I don't even think they really voted. You know, they found out about it, and it was unanimous, both at the House and the Senate. Yeah. So, I mean, you can't ask for more than that. So, tell me that it can't be done. Yeah. Well, you guys just blew that theory, because... Look at how fast it got done with the mosh pipe. So I think it, I'm, I'm hopeful. I think if we just get all this out here, like if anyone, please tell them. If they don't know how to contact me, tell them. You know, uh, I know a lot of people are wary to call a selectman. I'm not sure why, but a lot of you guys know me on a personal basis. So just make sure that you let people know that I'm just Regina who wants to uh, sustain Hampton. All right. Sounds good. All right. I have a question. Do you write to know the uh, you, you, you write to know, to know request? And they kept telling you guys they cannot give you the uh, the rooms and meals taxes for Hampton or Hampton Beach. Broken out, showing what comes specifically from Hampton and Hampton Beach. How about if you make your right to know law very specific? You put all the businesses down. They don't have to give you the business name. They just can give you the figures. Right. Well, I tried asking that from the businesses one year, but that didn't go over so well for me. <laughs> <laughs> like, why don't I just ask the people to pay it, you know? But I don't know. They didn't want to. If you do it that way, maybe then they have to have, you have very specific businesses right there. Okay, this is the galley hatch. This is the four. Right, one. exactly. This is the old saw. That's the best western, blah, 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 from uptown. Then you go the same thing on the beach. You, you list them all. They have to provide it. Yeah, that could be. That's I'm, the way to do it. Then you have it. Then I'm, you, then they I'm pretty sure say, Christina oh, probably already has the list ready to go. Or Seacoast or whatever, because you ask specific questions. I know all about that 91A. Right, Chuck? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fred, uh, sorry. Just from, from my own experience in dealing with the same issue, um, 91A requires them to give you whatever they've got. Right. They're more than willing to do that. Bob, you were exactly right on your definition of it. If they don't have it, they're not obliged to create a new report since that <coughs> is a, that's an expense to them, which is not within their budget, and you can't do it by just doing <coughs> a It would take, and it's probably a good idea, to perhaps file some legislation that would take another year. I mean, everything does take another year or two that would expand it so that in special cases like this, they would be obliged to do that. And I think that would be a good, a good thing to do. But one of the things that I found, uh, I dealt with then Dredd uh, quite intimately on the parking revenue issue. And I was always of the belief that they charged too much for that and for the pavilion up there and some of the other facilities that they had, that the state was charging too much money. And even though they didn't, that was not included the way I was looking at it in their reports, I sat down with uh, the head of, of uh, State Parks <coughs> and uh, uh, Phil Bryce, and we spent two, three hours, and he showed me step by step by step how they developed it, how it compared to other civilian prices and other similar deals. And it wasn't in exactly the form that I would have wanted it, but he did explain it very fully. And I'm, I'm very sure that when you sit down with them, if you if you don't try to go at them like this. Well, I'm hoping we don't do that, yes. The information, I'm sure that you'll get a lot of information, and a lot of it may be things that you never realized existed before. That happened to me. And uh, that's everything down here from rooms and meals tax to parking fees to uh, things to have to do with environmental things, the, uh, the, the nuke station, all of these things. 
sit down and talk with them, they're more than willing to give you the information that they have. It might not be exactly the way you thought you wanted it, but it should answer your question. So I hope that's, that's the way. It I hope so too. All right. Anyone else? That's Thank it. you very much. Thank you. <laughs> um, I have uh, Michelle Zano here. She's running for a state rep. Last month we had Pat Bushway. Is that the right name? And so if, uh, one thing about our meetings is we're open to anybody. So if you want to get up and give us a few words and tell us about yourself and yes. before I forget. Oh, good. Thank, you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. I appreciate your time. Uh, my name is Michelle Zeno. I was born here in the Seacoast area, right in Exeter Hospital. My parents still live in the same house I was born and raised in, in Stratum. I went to Exeter High School. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, we can be friends. Um, I then went to college at Franklin Pierce in Ringe. I had all my first jobs all up and down the seacoast from scooping ice cream at Lagos Lone Oak to lifeguarding at Water Country and then moved to director of sales and marketing for Water Country for a few years during college. I started my own business when I was very young. I then moved on to the restaurant business and was director of training for several different large restaurant companies. Uh, the hospitality business is my passion. I have been married for 21 years as of a few days ago. I have a 14-year-old that's going to Winnicott High School, and I have a 7-year-old who is over at Center. So I'm very involved in the community. I am on the board for Little Warriors football. I'm the chair for that. I am also on the board for Hampton Riptide Lacrosse and I'm in charge of communications with the schools in that regard. And I'm very involved in my church with first and fourth graders through their curriculum. So I'm pretty busy. Um, I feel like this is the next right thing for me to do, to give back. My husband is a lawyer and he started his own business here in Hampton just in July. He was a prosecutor for the state for about 12 years and then a defense attorney for a year and a half, and he started to do his own thing just a few months ago. So we are also small business owners in town. So I can confidently say that this is what I love. Hampton is what I love, the Seacoast is what I love, and I want to keep it safe and secure and affordable and clean, and I am learning what your passions are because we all have different issues that we care about in town. And I don't know what all of yours are, but I want to know what they are. So I'm spending a lot of time asking questions and I would appreciate learning from you um, the things that you are in fact vested in so that I can be a voice for you at the state level so that I can represent Hampton well. That is what my goal is, to do that. Because I live here, this is where I live, this is what I do. I eat at the restaurants and I go to the schools and I talk to people and I go to church here and I have friends here and my neighbors are important to me so this is the next right thing to do so I would appreciate being able to talk with you um, not sure if this is the right time but if you have any questions of me I would love to be able to sit down and try to answer those and if I can't get an answer for you I promise I'll research it and do what I can to help sit down and make solutions with you. So that's me. Great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Good luck. Thanks, All right. Michelle. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. We're going to right to, we're gonna go right to old business. Maureen, any old business? I don't think so. Bob? Well, the summer's over. Another year has been put in the books. Yeah. And there were <laughs> complex issues like every summer, but they got resolved. I think everyone should take a, a great deal of comfort in exactly what the district does. And I'm not now speaking to the commercial interest of the residents of the residents. I'm speaking to the opportunity we give to hundreds of thousands of people over the course of a summer to come here and suspend the stresses of their life for a moment. So a four-year-old may 
look into the sky at night and see light and noise and be in awe of it. He might even see his parents dancing while the Continentals are playing. Mm, the Continentals. Uh, it's, it's just a marvelous thing. There's a, there's a synergy <coughs> that occurs during the summer that is just extremely wholesome. And what I see in all of that is the goodness in America. And I really think people should appreciate all the good that occurs because there is this form of government to coordinate its happening. Done. Well, I'm not even going to try to follow that. <laughs> the great orator. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, <I'll> leave now. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, <laughs> No, I just think uh, the cooperation that we have with the town, with the state, and everything that we've done really helped have a successful 2018. We had a couple little bumps, and hopefully we can work to get ahead of that. So I really appreciate the Chiefs coming today and filling us in. We definitely need um, to support them as much as possible, public works as much as possible. And one thing we have to keep our eyes and ears open on is what's going to happen with trash and recycling. So I just want, I, it's something that we, uh, that we've had a battle with before. We won 84% against 16%. Uh, so I thought it was put to bed, but something tells me it might come back. So uh, let's, just, let's just work together because we're still one town. Yes? Wait, are you talking about no, I'm just talking in general. I'm not I'm talking about. I'm actually surprised I didn't get any questions about trash. Well, we're waiting for the for the <laughs> for the bomb to, the, to be um, dropped. We're waiting for the bomb to be dropped. So. Well, I've already asked that it be part of the town manager's report on Monday. Yeah. We did talk about it at the last board of selectmen meeting on the first. So I don't know if anyone wants to go back and look at that. But I did ask for it to be come up under the town manager's. But I'm hoping that it's not going to have anything to do with the beach and the town. It's going to have to do, again, about just the amount of bins that are going to be limited for everyone. Well, and I'm going to, I'm going to say it now because this is very uh, personal to me. I put a lot of trash out in 12 weeks, a lot of trash. But 40 weeks, I put nothing out. So if you're going to limit the amount of bins, I want my 52 weeks worth of bins in 12 weeks. <laughs> All right, so it, it definitely, <coughs> I, but, and I'm paying taxes for 52 weeks of the year. I want to, I want to know that that uh, we're getting our fair cut. So that I'm going to say it right now, and I, I always say it. The beach sends two half-empty school buses to the town. We get a lot of services from the town for 12 weeks, but we have 40 weeks that we don't get a lot of services. So, and I appreciate everything. I'm telling you, we have the best fire. We have the best police and we have <laughs> the best <laughs> public works. Yeah. But I, I, I know it all comes down to, we do a lot of stuff at that beach well, and it's 12 come, weeks. Come I will, but and, you know, when your you meetings are different than ours. I know they are. You have a public hearing and then we, we sit and watch. We let people jump out and, and say things, which is, could, could get, really get out of control in the town. But, um, so I, so I'm, I'm making it public of how I feel right now. And um, I, no, I'm just hoping we don't get, I'm hoping we don't have a huge battle. So on that note, new business, Bob. <laughs> on the trash? Yeah. Well, I called them. They went up one street and went, other two streets and missed four streets. And we picked up the trash on four that's streets. last week. Yes. Yeah. Hmm. That's surprising because they... they, they no, like no, I called and they said, we'll be back the next day and leave them out. We left them out all week. Yeah. They got picked up on Tuesday. You're right. They didn't read. The drivers on the trucks are not the same level right. in operation or thinking as the guys who make the policies that they're supposed to follow. Well, you got to remember the thing, that. Right. The thing I mean, is, that the ones we've had, yeah. have been for long periods. Yeah. Now they've stepped up to management in different positions, so now it's other ones. But I mean, 
you see them go by, they picked up the recycle, but not the trash. Mm -hmm. I would have rather had it the other way around. Last thing, last thing. This all goes back to exactly what the chiefs yeah. were talking about. That yeah. we just keep adding, 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 except there's no investment in our departments that have to run it all. Well, there's no investment. We keep buying brand new trucks that are good trucks that are that uh, are supposed to make it easier. So we have investment. No, but I mean the actual people. Yeah. Like, All right. No, I understand like, that. The assets of the town, like the employees of the town, are. I mean, without them, You're we lost. got we got nothing. And without public works, this town couldn't run in an hour. No, no, I don't care what anyone says. So. And like you're saying, a lot of the managers, they're now managing the foremans now. So those guys that were used to the roots and know where to go, zigzag, you know, go down all the streets, especially down the beach, they're not there anymore. So well, we I mean, have people that live there year round on oh, those I streets. Don't. So I mean, with yeah. me, I, I leave, so I mean, I'm not there during the winter. But I feel bad for the ones that are there all winter, if they keep, if they get left out. Oh, believe me, I don't get left out. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, neither do I. <laughs> no, they pick up my trash. I am shocked. I don't get left out. Any new business, Maureen? Uh, yeah, I need to um, discuss, maybe, I don't know if we need a vote. Are we um, going to get involved in the Christmas parade again this year? I think we should, and I nominate you as chairperson. <laughs> I'll second it. All in favor? So, in other words, It's we unanimous. <laughs> So what else is new? Anyway, um, that means we have, I need to fill out the application, correct? As to experience. Yeah, what is the theme? I filled it out last year. I oh, it is a nice thing. No. Believe. No. Believe. 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 I believe. Come up with a thing we're going to do. <laughs> How do we believe? Well, we get the Continentals. <laughs> yeah. We're going to believe yeah. they're still alive. <laughs> but yeah, well, we're out of two. We need to have them no matter what. Actually, we'll none of the that original is still part of them. But the music is important, so we need them number one. Right. When is the parade? Do we know? What, honey? I believe, I believe in Hampton Beach. Okay. okay. So we are having this, uh, gentlemen. Of and, um, and we'll have, we need our to have a time party to decorate. And I'll bring the hot John. Again. <laughs> what? Do we need a motion to buy a new tire so it, we don't have a flat? Yeah, we need it. Right? It's, no. it's being repaired as, as we speak. Right. Okay. The assailing the leak. <laughs> well, whatever yeah. you have to do, get the thing working. So I, I want to see Chuck driving. I'm starting to question the. I'd like to make a comment on the trash. <laughs> It comes out to old business, which is now new business, because it keeps circling around. And I would just say one thing. Down at the beach, the attitude is pretty much so few give so much to so many and ask for so little in return. And the town should take that into consideration. And that's it. OK. Did you take my minutes? No. Probably. I wrote on no, no, I don't know. Alright. Yeah. So we're gonna to go to approval of minutes from September twelfth, two thousand eighteen. Do I have a motion to accept them as written? Hello? <laughs> motion by Bob Ladd, second, second. by Pauline. All in favor? It's a silent majority. <laughs> yeah. You've never been silent. Come on. Yeah, there you go. All right. Since we never have public comment, <laughs> does there any public comment? I have one. All right. You go first. No first. I mean, I know I can't vote on the precinct or anything like that, but there is a family on there that has been out of this town at the beach for five years, and they're still on the precinct list. On the voter list? Yeah. Well, I, I think, think this is the year it gets it gets. Purged. So, yeah, it is going to be purged. There's dead people on there too. <laughs> they do. Yeah. Yeah. But most of them don't. Oh, they have to wait yeah. five years because they can take them off. I'm going to tell you, it's very difficult now to become. You can only call it one. Uh, to get on the precinct list, you've got to do all this stuff 
And in order to get to be a resident of Hampton, I am telling you, I just went through it for my daughter. What a nightmare that was. And we paid taxes for 65 years on oh, this yeah. beach. Before you leave, would you like give you. me the name of the yeah. people? She got that blonde. On They're on the first page. page. That's why oh, I beautiful. Know. Surely <laughs> save me up to nope. Otherwise, I'd still be waiting. Oh, yeah. John Kane? Yes. Could you state your name? For Carolyn Fluke. Carolyn Fluke, F L U K E. Thanks. John Kane, uh, speaking as resident of 115 Ocean Boulevard. I just yeah. want to thank the um, police chief for coming in here. Uh, this year, I haven't called for one fight in front of my house, and Chuck oh, knows there's usually a lot of fights. And, and like you said, I think we're attracting a different crowd. You know, it, it's just more upscale crowd. Sometimes in the spring we get them. But I think Richie, with bringing in all his people from Epping and Durham, it, it's, it's, it's great. Uh, also, personally want to thank um, uh, Chief Ayot. Um, I was taken out of this building in March, or I figure at some time, early in the spring, and uh, brought up to the, um, you know, Portsmouth, that did all the work, came back. And Chief Ayot actually came into my house the next day and called the engine to do, to do another EKG on me. And he read it, and I was impressed. So he's, he's yeah. a paramedic, and he it's could read guy. it right away. And he could tell that, you know, I've had a heart attack, so they, they were concerned a little bit. But um, both those guys, I think, are the best chiefs we've had in a long time. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Great. Okay. Yes, Fred. I'd like to, if I could, put a bug in you folks' ear. Um, a number of years ago when I chaired the Hampton Beach Area Commission, I always used to say that it was very important that all of our actions be aimed toward keeping a good balance between commercial and residential here at the beach. And toward the end of this season, I've asked a, a number of business owners here at the beach, just when I bumped into them, how's it going, how's the season and everything else, it's, they, they all seem to think that the, some parts of the business sector were down a little bit. And a couple of them expressed the view that maybe it's because we don't have as many people who, are, who come here for a shorter period of time and use the services like restaurants and stores and other things. And because a lot of people are now living here permanently and they do everything at home. You know, they, they cook at home and so forth. And they don't use some of those services as much. So the thought crossed my mind uh, that maybe it would be worth somehow looking at a way to better balance business and commercial. When I was growing up around here, it was everybody, the families would come up for a month at a time or the whole summer, and it was mom and the kids would come up for the summer and dad would come up on the weekends from Massachusetts. And there was a lot of, of um, short-term stays and they used a lot of the services around here. Now we're getting away from that. And I know that it's, it's a sensitive area, I know, but, but it could be anything from having a warrant article that put a moratorium on the building of certain types of, of structures based on their usage. It could be a discussion with the planning board to um, come up with something that balanced the, the type of buildings that could be built. Several years ago, maybe most people don't remember it, I was on the planning board at the time, and we had a moratorium on mother-in-law apartments. The way they regulated that was by, by the number of sewer connections, toilet connections and sink connections and so forth. And a lot of towns do have that. Uh, it could just be uh, a building inspector's approach to certain things. It, it, there's a number of different ways to do it, but I think that if you don't start at least considering it and putting it into your planning for long term, there's going to come a day when you're going to say, gee, we don't have enough people down here that go to these businesses, these beach businesses, to make them work. And, and we're, we're driving people out of business, not driving, but we're letting them go out of business because we're not supporting them in the right way. So I'm just bringing it up as something that I'd, I'd sure like to see you commissioners think that over and, and come up with some ideas, put together a little thought panel to just throw ideas out as ways to approach it. You, you can't stop a developer from developing. It's his right, it's his business. You can't stop a property owner from doing what they want with it on their property as long as it's within the ordinances, et cetera, et cetera. But at the same time, 
if there isn't a balance, it's going to affect long term the future of this beach. It's going to affect the ability of the beach to fund itself, to maintain itself, and to develop itself for the long term. So I'm just tossing it out there, and I hope that maybe you guys will bite on it and see what you can do on it. Yeah. Well, that whole thing started 10, 15 years ago when they started ripping down cottages and putting up nicer places for year-round use, and then yep. the condos started coming in. Yep. What we need is nightly rooms where the people come up here, stay a couple nights, they go out to dinner, they go out to breakfast, they go out to the convenience store because they need cigarettes, newspaper, whatever not. They buy a couple t-shirts and they go home. The people who live in the condos you never see, people who live here year-round you very rarely see either. Well, see, the thing that makes us, makes us good and successful in the summertime, i.e. a lot of rental places, that's the thing, if you look at the flip side of it, that is what's creating the problem because you have a lot of empty places. Gee, I'm not getting anything if there's nobody in there. Maybe I can charge them a real cheap amount, at least get a little bit of cash flow. And that's what a lot of proprietors here do. I don't believe them a bit. They're trying to, they're trying to get the most uh, revenue back out of their buildings, even in the off-season. Yeah. As a result, what it does is it attracts people who have the least amount of money to spend, and they come down here and they fill up a lot of places. Well, down I was here. talking in the summertime, we need nightly rentals. Well, we've definitely lost a lot of hotels. We lost, we've lost a lot those of to condos. Lot we've lot lost them to condos right. because but it's a, lot a better of the... income for the land owner, the property. Well, owner, I'm not the talking about, I'm not arguing about the land. You, if it's your land, you can do with it whatever Absolutely. you want. That's what but makes it a tricky situation. That's what we need. Yeah. We need nightly yeah. rentals. So, but, so what's, happened, be... what's happened with Hampton is <laughs> always a community with a lot of beach cottages. People would come down for their two weeks, come down for... That trend in the in the travel industry is gone. People do not That's take perfect. vacations like that. That's they take three and four yeah. day trips. Yeah. And what's happened is these cottages are renting maybe five five weeks out of their, their 10, 12 week season. And they're, and a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them still have. And, and so now that's easier to go year round. And, and, and that, that's definitely been a problem. Yeah. But you have to be careful when you, so we, we came up with rules that are anything on the leather streets, if you're going to build something, there has to be a commercial aspect. So the cheapest way to do a commercial aspect is to put retail on the ground level, and then they put condos above it. Now we're oversaturated with, it, with stores, and instead of the stores staying busy, they're splitting the pie. So you have to be careful when you start to try to regulate anything. Anytime the government tries to regulate, we all know what happens there. You should know because uh, I see you moving a little to the middle, Fred. I'm kind of surprised. Um, <laughs> um, never see that. Okay. All right, but um, <laughs> so we have to be careful how we regulate that, you know. And and, and um, I, I think you know, and, and the town has to help too. You know, back in 1986, we did we we needed parking for hotels. Myself, the Hillcrest, we lost the lot that we were rented from. Went to the town. We weren't able to get any additional parking. So the town didn't give us the parking, so they lost. I tore down three cottages. The Hillcrest tore down two cottages. So they lost that, that uh, property taxes. So those cottages, which used to have weekly rentals in them, now had 40 parking spots in it. Well, we need parking, that's true, but now we lost, we lost those weekly rentals. So we have to be careful. We all have to work together <coughs> to try to make... Uh, make make it work for Hampton Beach and this, Hampton Town. This is one of the things that led to the formation of the Hampton Beach Area Commission because every time you do an action, it Im impinges on a lot of other agencies and interests, political and, and uh, administrative and everything else. So that's that kind of falls into their bailiwick too to help you guys plan on this. So I think what you need, I think you need a little think tank that, that addresses this one thing and get some people who can address it uh, and just come up with the ideas. Just come up with the ideas and a report with some recommendations to consider. Nothing firm, nothing hard, but at least it'll get the thought process rolling down the road. Because it seems as though we're kind of backtracking into the, let's build a condo uh, as, a, as the option for, the, for most anything. Else. Yeah. Some of the condos are very, very nice, but, you know, it's, it, has Im it has impacts outside of it. Yeah, I agree. Another thing, Chuck, is it any way possible, 
either to get loans, grants, or whatever is out there, a parking garage. I know that uh, Regina has been looking into it. Our lot isn't big enough for us to do it. The only lots that are big enough for a parking garage right now on the beach uh, are the town lot, the casino lot, or the Simcoe parking lot. You, so. You'll never be able to justify getting state funds down here for something that's used to 12 But weeks then out we of the can year. go back. It's 12 weeks out of the year. Yeah, but we it. also can go back. They're building all them condos. All them new condos that are being built right now is one parking spot per unit. Change the, you have to, to do that, you have to change the zoning ordinance. Well, wait a second. What I'm trying to say is now you have a parking garage, long term lease, or you sell them. If somebody wants a parking spot, let them buy a parking spot. Then they get taxed on property taxes, just like the state does, if you lease it. Are you talking about inside the condos? Yeah. No, 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 no. no. You oh, build if a the, parking if the town garage. built a yeah. parking and garage, then you, you go can ahead sell and half sell the spots. Them. The economics okay. will never work out on when it's absent, vacant for 40 weeks. There but was a if study you take done a about 15, maybe 25 years ago now, mm -hmm. for both the Ashworth lot and the casino lot yep. that okay. showed how, it, when it would become profitable. The first five years, the town would lose money if they built a parking garage. In year five or year six, as I recall, it would start to generate more. But uh, I, I don't know, the numbers have probably changed by now, but. I started the first parking study that the Hampton Beach Area Commission did, it just got finished <coughs> last year, or a couple years ago. And I said when we started it, I believe what we're gonna find out is that there are, are enough parking spaces on Hampton Beach. They are just not where people want them, well, when they, they want them. Yeah. And yeah. the study that was finished, that's exactly what they came up with. There are enough places, but people don't want to park down on Island Path, or down at the State Park, or on the re more remote lots, that the Island Path lot is, is the most underutilized lot in town. Yeah. And, and yeah. You know, not anymore. <laughs> I mean, one of the things that, that would have worked well would have been put a multimodal lot up there at uh, Route 1 and 101 and, and have some kind of a tram. Disneyland, uh, Disney Shadow. World, the, the trams there travel a farther distance than from that down to here. They, they travel a tremendous the, the town rejected that but idea. It's, but it's because it's the town versus the beach again. They don't see any benefit for them to have somebody that wants people down here. If they lose the town taxes, or the beach taxes, then they'll know the difference. Well, yeah, that's true. But, you know, when you talk about, talk about it on the Board of Selectmen, it happens, it's, it's just, it's a very difficult thing to overcome. I think the way to do it is to get, get some kind of a group together that thinks this project only. Don't get professional help in, just get people who can come up with intelligent ideas and can wash, mash them out from all the perspectives so that you can work out the, the uh, conflicts in there and come up with a set of recommendations that are reasonable that you can present to yourselves, the board of selectmen, the planning board, the legislature, whoever. Just a thought. Why is it? Of all beaches, off season at Hampton, it's like everything closes. After seafood, and that's too bad because the fall's been beautiful, as we know. And there's, I wish there was some way. And I know that certainly people have done your share with, you know, having entertainment <coughs> up to the 15th of September. But it just fries my soul to look at all these, and there is no one there. Now, people come in the chamber, and they come from all over the United States. I mean, it's not, come from all over Europe. and all over Europe. And they'll just say, well, how come more businesses aren't open? Well, and, and you know, it's a problem of the times. It's because there's no, no help. There's yeah. no staff. Well, I know that. So if I, rent 60, ho if I rent 60 hotel rooms, yeah. you know how long it takes me and my, my wife and I, I should say, yeah. to clean those rooms till the next weekend? I don't want to do that anymore. All right, and that's what that's what you do. And, and then opening the store, I, I've opened I open yeah. the store. I'm in there, and um, oh, I know you are. Yeah, but but you can only do so much. And and um, I don't know what an answer is. To this that. past week, remember, you were wearing heavy coats, and it was cold as hell down here. 
and it's unpredictable if and when that oh, will today happen. was packed. That's another thing that works against That's you. That's right. Today it was packed. Yeah. 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 Today and yesterday it was packed. Yeah. yeah. Can I say one thing about that? One, I mean, everywhere in the whole, every, all of the state restaurants. Yeah. I'll say all hospitality, but I'm going to say restaurants. That's what I go to the most. They don't have help anywhere. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like there's no more work. And the other thing about Hampton is there's a lot of business owners down here that deliberately don't stay open because if They're the town's not going to support <laughs> them to be in open 12 months of the year, well, then what's the point? Because I'm still yet to be convinced that this can't be going 12 months of the year down here. I, I mean, used they to do be it in 12 other... months. Well, yeah, the you town, know. Yeah. The town decided they don't plow me anymore. Yeah, That's well, when I closed up January, I'm just, February, even March. Even through September, you go up into Maine, as you do sometimes. I go everywhere. Here again. I'm sure you see businesses open oh, in Maine. Oh, yeah. Okay. A gunquit. I mean, a, a you know, gunquit, the Canadians, uh, the Canadians um, they, they, they still go away for two weeks at a time. Right. Kenny and Bunn they don't come here anymore. And it's not the exchange rate because, you know what, they're in Maine. No, I agree with you 100%. So it's, I, we have to decide what we want, which yeah. I think is what Fred Bryce is saying get together, whether it's precinct, oh, right. Hampton Beach Area Commission. Yeah. Well, we already have Fran on the HBAC. It would be nice if you could grab the zoning guy, but I don't know if that's gonna work. But, um, and you know, get together and figure out what the town wants. As far as the parking garage, I'm all for the town building it. And actually, Chris and I, we're gonna go and meet the guy in Portsmouth. But then, you know, the mosh pipe, well, actually, first the wastewater treatment plant, we decided that we, we found out we had to invest like forty million dollars in that, <laughs> and then we have the mosh pipe. So I have the preliminary work that I have done on it, and we were going to go talk to the people in Portsmouth because they have just recently done a pipe. They were still working on it when I started putting all this together. They were going through the you know the development of their new parking garage because I'm thinking like something like the old parking garage in Portsmouth, just simple, you know, seven hundred and fifty spots in front of the police station, top level, we sit out. Anyone down here wants a spot, thousand bucks a year. That's $250,000 of income, all right? They won't advertise a building like that, though. We, we did the same thing but several not, years ago, the, uptown. Because it's only for uptown 12 weeks, like you said, but if you're not 12 weeks anymore, if you can eventually convert exactly. it over to working toward a year round, then all that stuff's going to work. But you've got to have the attraction that will bring the people here. Right, exactly. Or you can have you need you can more just commercial the commercial business down here like it used to be. All right. Have, that's we we could do this all night, so I'm going to end it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. And um, any closing comments, Bob? No, I think it's been thoroughly discussed. <laughs> Maureen? All right, on that note, I'm going to close the meeting at 6.41. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.